So I'm a black man, I'm a CTO. I basically get paid to travel around the world working for billionaires. From the Instagram and Snapchat stories, everyone seems to think that you've got the coolest job in the world. The reality of it is that you are clearing up rooms that have just had sex parties, orgies, prostitutes, coke residue on the tables the next day, veal or livestock so fresh that it actually gets flown in on a helicopter, slaughtered on board, and served to the guest as fresh as can be. Unfortunately, it can sometimes get a bit seedy, a bit creepy with drunk people who think they can do whatever they want. These owners, these, these millionaires, these billionaires, they're incredibly powerful people and a lot of the time they get their own way. Drug smuggling can go on in the industry. If people wanted to be moving, you know, drugs and illicit substances, I reckon it'd be pretty easy to do. It's an incredibly secretive world which like no one really knows much about. The guests just use sleepy yachts as their little playground. They live in this little bubble where they think anything goes and anything can happen. First of all, a deckhand does not by any means get paid to travel. A deckhand's duties include cleaning the exterior of the vessel, polishing the paint, gel coat, stainless steel, may include sanding, scrubbing teak decks, varnishing, painting, launching of water toys and watercraft, the rope handling when coming in and out of port. Nowhere in the employment contract would it say that they are getting paid to travel the world. As for social media, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, I think we would all agree that in general, most of us put the best part of our day on our social media accounts. And if we're having a bad day, we're not gonna be posting anything on social media. I don't think yachting's got anything to do with that. I think that's just the world as it is. In my opinion, it's a bit of a pointless comment. In the past, I myself have cleaned up cabins after a couple have had sex the night before. But the way the context has been put in here makes it seem very seedy and whatnot. But the reality is, if you're a cleaner in a hotel, probably the majority of the time, you get couples staying there, and what the couples do, they have sex. So it's the next morning, you're probably stripping beds, you're cleaning up, it's just part of the duties. If you're wearing gloves and you've got the correct equipment and cleaning gear, it's just part of the job. People having sex on a super yacht is no different to people having sex at home or having sex at a hotel. Thankfully, I've never had to clean up um, residue of narcotics, cocaine, or other drugs, whatever it might be. But I just want to make the point, there's, there's, there's no difference from a, a regular everyday person consuming narcotics or drugs than a person with money. Some people on the weekend, they like to um, take drugs. And for people with money, not all people with money also like to do it. So really there is, there is no difference. I wanna make the point here that don't go believing that every super yacht owner and charterer are taking drugs. It's a very small percentage. This is an interesting point regarding the livestock coming on board, having it slaughtered on board. I've actually reached out to a number of friends of mine that work in this industry on the big mega yachts and giga yachts, asking them the question, have you ever had livestock on board? And they all say the same thing. The closest thing to livestock is we have fresh lobster on board, which actually is no different to getting fresh lobster at your local seafood restaurant. As we're bringing, I don't know, veal on board, lamb, you know, livestock in that way. I've never seen it in 20 years. I've never heard of it in the last 20 years. And friends of mine that are officers and captains within the industry have also said they've never heard of it. From experience, my dealing with drunk people, whether they are, you know, regular everyday people or millionaires or billionaires, they're exactly the same. There's no difference. People react differently under the influence of alcohol. The fact they have money in their back pocket doesn't make any difference to the effects that alcohol will have on your regular everyday person. Drug smuggling on board mega yachts and super yachts is the biggest load of crap I've ever heard. Just use logic for a moment here. Let's pretend for a second that you are a billionaire and you own a hundred, two, three, four hundred million dollar asset. 
Will you, in any kind of mind, use that asset to smuggle drugs, running the risk of having that asset, the yacht, being arrested or impounded by the authorities? I don't think so. Let's use some common sense here. I think he's, he's misused the word of drug smuggling here. It simply does not happen. Drug smugglers are out there to smuggle drugs, to make money, to sell on, and to make profit. Super yacht owners are simply not doing that. That's, a, that's an out and out lie for sure. Yeah, of course the super yacht world is very private and the owners want to keep it private. It's the same as you and I at home. When we're at home, we want our privacy. We don't want strangers or the public knowing what's happening in our own home. A super yacht is just like a second home. Families own super yachts, they bring their families on board, they enjoy the vacation, they sleep on board, they eat on board. So it's a second home. Of course they want their privacy. I would want my privacy and I'm sure the majority of you watching would also want your privacy. So I don't really see the big deal. As for anything goes, I would say within reason and within the, within the law, if you have money, you can pretty much do whatever you want as long as it's legal. If you want to go jet skiing, you can go jet skiing. If you want to fly in a famous entertainer to entertain you for the evening, you can afford to do that. I think the way it's been said in this video, anything goes, paints a very bad picture of what the reality is. Look, at the end of the day, unfortunately, the, there are some difficult guests out there, but the majority of them are good. These yachts are always pretty mad, particularly the larger ones. They will pretty much always contain a pool or some sort of hot tub, a kit with a gym. Some of them have cinemas, some of them have their own spas, heli decks, and will store a helicopter on board. The cost of these yachts can exceed anywhere of like half a billion pounds. I think some of the most expensive chart yachts in the market at the moment can actually cost four million a week. You do always secretly know that the people you're working for haven't always done the best things in their lives. I've received job offers for the owner of a boat who is one of the most notoriously corrupt people on the planet. And during the job interview, the chief officer actually asked me, am I morally okay with who this person is and what he's done? And you kind of just have to ask yourself, Am I okay with this? The expectations of the guests are pretty much whatever they ask for, we can deliver to them. As the day tends to go on and more alcohol that gets consumed, their expectations go up and our ability to deliver goes down. Sexual harassment definitely does go on in the industry. You do hear quite a few stories which make the hairs in the back of your neck stand up. There is a, a sexual element to the job 100%. It's a very superficial industry that a lot of boats will only hire on the way you look and what waist size you are, what, what chest size you are, etc. I think they can forget that you're here for work, you're not here to be violated in any way. The victims of these cases are paid off. They're told to keep their mouths shut in order for their bonuses or perks. It gives the people this right to think that they can get away with anything. There have been like, a few serious incidents on in super yachting that have gone wrong and actually led to fatalities. One of the most famous ones in the industry was actually a anchor chain coming loose. The chain spun around in what's called the mooring bay, which is the right in the forward section of the boat called the bow. The chain spun around and actually took the leg off one of the officers and unfortunately he bled to death and died. Basically, you've just got to stay really switched on at all times, which can be a big part of the reason why working in the industry can make you so tired and run down. I did like a pretty long stint working on a charter boat. It was like nearly 130 days of season, back-to-back -back charters, and within that time, we only had one day off. At the end of that, when I actually left that boat, I felt like I was ready to leave the industry because it was just killing me, essentially. You can burn out really quickly, and you can look at guys who are, you know, they've been in yachting for 10 years or so and they look pretty weathered. Their skin's like destroyed by the sun. The lack of sleep is just fucked them over and it can really have quite a physical effect on your body and it's pretty visible. The reason that we're so busy is because obviously we only have a certain number of crew cabins on board. You're always in a cabin of two, if not four, on some bigger boats, and if not like six on some super large ones. Cabin fever is definitely, definitely a real thing. 
Um, you can feel puked up like a caged animal sometimes and personal space becomes a serious issue. Working in yachting definitely teaches you a lot of mental fortitude. You know, you work very long hours with little rest and that teaches you like how to be resilient and just kind of like push on, push on through. Obviously there are some negative effects on your mental health. I don't really understand the mindset of a billionaire, but when a lot of money is involved, it changes people and I think it always brings out the worst in a lot of people's personalities. As for sexual harassment, yes, it does happen in the superior industry. However, it does unfortunately happen in every other industry on this planet. It does happen and it always tends to happen when people have been drinking. Very rarely does it happen from experience when people are their normal selves and aren't under the influence of alcohol. Alcohol brings out a different version of, of yourself. And it doesn't matter if you're a millionaire or a billionaire, sexual harassment happens in all walks of life, unfortunately. As for hiring based on looks, the reality is it probably does happen on a small percentage of yachts. But as the hiring person, myself, the captain, I need to ensure that my team, my crew, not only are they mentally fit, but also physically fit for duty. Because as he says in this video, it is long hours, it is very tiring, it is very physically and mentally exhausting. So we need to make sure that people we're hiring are capable and fit to do their job. We can't have an individual crew member on board that's out of shape and slacking on their work because then that puts more pressure and more stress on the rest of the crew. As for crew getting violated and paid off, I've never experienced that. None of my crew have ever experienced that in 20 years. It probably has happened, but what I wanna say and stress here is probably happening on 1%, maybe 2% of yachts in this industry. Don't believe for a second that crew members are getting violated on a daily basis. It simply isn't true. I'm sure there are vessels out there where guests do probably get away with anything. At the end of the day, it does come down to the captain, the captain's backbone, and what the captain is willing to do for his crew. On board AWOL for the years I was running AWOL all my crew, the guests couldn't get away with anything. It was very clear from the moment they came on board, I always do a safety induction and make sure the rules and regulations on board are very clear and nobody is above the rules. Most yachts run this way. Again, unfortunately, like in any industry, there is a small percentage where captains allow these kind of bad things to happen. So this is a very sad story. The vessel that um, this person is talking about is Motor Yacht Ocean Victory. I've met a few people that worked on board that boat that told me the story. It is very sad. Unfortunately, um, lives are lost at sea, not only in yachting, but also in the, mar in the uh, Merchant Navy, in the Royal Navy, in all the fishermen lose their lives at sea. But be assured that every year the safety policy, uh, safety management is improving. Um, crew do come first when it comes to the safety through what's called ISM, International Safety Management, and the MLC, which is the Maritime and Labour Convention, which all commercial yachts must comply by and they get audited and checked every year by, by flag state, by class, and by their internal management. As for working back-to-back -back charters with no days off, yes, it is true. However, it is not a surprise to any of the crew members. For all crew joining yachts, the captain, myself, will, during the interview process when hiring, will say, we are working back-to-back -back charters. There are no days off for the entirety of the summer. And in return, they are earning very good tips, very good money. And yes, they are working long hours, but it's not a surprise. 
People sign the contract knowing what is expected of them. We don't hide anything, it's the reality. You have a choice. But don't go thinking it's kind of slave labor, it's not. Because at the end of the week, they could be earning one, two, three, four, five thousand euros in a week's charter. So I've been doing it for many, many years. I accept these are the weeks and months we're gonna be working nonstop without a day off. And I make sure it's very clear to all the crew members and they come on board, so there's no surprises. We had one crew member during last season or season before that started moaning how tired um, he or she was. And I sat him down, I said, remember at the beginning, I was very clear, because yeah, I know you were very clear, I just didn't expect um, this much hard work. And I said, is it something, is it, is it a surprise? Is it something I didn't share with you? He goes, no, no. Uh, it was just had a, a bit of a toll on him. He wasn't really used to it. We got him through it and through the end of the season and he left with a lot of tips, a lot of money, managed to go off, get some time off, go traveling, do some courses and have a bit of a normal life after the season with a very healthy bank account. To be perfectly honest, um, I have also experienced that feeling of wanting to quit and retire from yachting after a very, very tough charter season. But from experience, I know after five, six days off away from the boat, that's all I need personally. Some people need two weeks, some people need two months. I need four, five, six days. I get refreshed and I'm ready to go. So after most seasons when it's pretty tough, you get very worn out, tired, ready to quit, but have a break and then you'll be, you'll be eager to get back on board and to, um, to look forward to the next charter season. Well, I've been yachting for almost 20 years. I'm 35 now. I started when I was 16. How do I look? I think I look okay. The crew members and captains that do look rough tend to be the ones that have um, an unhealthy lifestyle, drink too much alcohol, don't keep fit, don't have a good diet and like in any walk of life if that's your lifestyle you're obviously going to look very run down i think i look okay for my age considering i've been in business for 20 years of course you are on board these yachts you're out in the mediterranean sun or caribbean sun for day after day after day after day yachts do provide protection for all crew okay we provide caps hats long sleeve shirts sunscreen of all different factors 30 40 50 60 but what I find is a lot of crew members choose not to use sun cream, sun protection. And that, over a long period of time, is going to ruin your skin. So it's their choice. Nine day of the yacht, it's their choice to, to either apply it or not, to use a cap or not. And more importantly, when you're working with these yachts, have good quality sunglasses. You're always busy because that is the job. These people chartering these yachts are paying a lot of money for good food, immaculate service. The vessel needs to look tip top condition at all times. Again, this is explained to all crew members before joining the yacht so they know what is expected of them. Again, it's not a surprise halfway in the season that they're working these long hours it is explained to them before they've agreed to taking the job. Cabin fever, it does, it does set in with all of us. Um, you learn through time and experience how to deal with it. And more importantly is when you are having a bit of cabin fever is to communicate with your crew members, have a chat, take a step outside for a breather, um, maybe speak to your cabin mate saying, look, I just need a half an hour, an hour on my own in my, in my cabin, just have some, have some space. And you learn really, I think people that get cabin fever tend to be the green crew, the first years and the second years. After your second season, it really, you don't even think about it anymore. You get used to it, you get used to the routine, you get used to the work, and you learn to enjoy the small things and have a bit of a laugh along the way. Um, it is sad that for some people, money can have a negative effect. But I want to stress that I would say 90 to 95% of our guests that we've had on board over the last 19, 20 years 
are good, decent human beings. Well-mannered, well-spoken, and do treat the crew as humans. They treat them well. Unfortunately, in all walks of life, there are a small percentage of people that don't have the manners, haven't been brought up correctly, and think that they can treat people, I'd say unfairly, put it politely, and inappropriately. So, I think finally to break down what this deckhand has said, I think, to be honest with you, a lot of it's been blown out of proportion. The fact he's wearing a mask and, you know, muffling his voice says to me he's more than likely still working in the industry, which really says a lot. You know, he, he, he doesn't speak very well of it, but is still willing to work in, in the business. I don't know if it's a fact, but I would guess he is. If he wasn't working in the business anymore, why would he need to muffle his voice and, and wear a mask? It's really sad. Um, this industry for me personally has been fantastic. Most of the time, it's been a great experience. I met my wife for this industry. I worked for the owner, the same owner for 15 years, absolute gentleman, heart of gold. Some of the charter guests we have over the years, I've met some fascinating people, some world leaders that I wish I could share with you, but due to NDAs, unable to. And the majority of these people, these millionaires and billionaires, I don't know why I did that, they are good, decent people. Um, but there, again, there are small percentage that aren't great, but it doesn't matter because you could be working in a McDonald's restaurant and the manager could be a difficult person to work for and treat his team badly. Just because these people have money doesn't make them any different from any, anybody else. So a question I would answer is, would I allow my children to work in the, in the yachting industry? The answer is yes, absolutely, 100%. I will guide them along the way, and I would recommend it, to be honest with you, for, for anybody. But saying that, the industry isn't for everybody. You know, you need to be determined, you need to be um, disciplined, hardworking, and willing to put in the hours and have a good team mentality. That's been my breakdown of this Vice video. It's pretty clear how I feel about it. I do hope you enjoy this video. A thumbs up will be much appreciated.